Hi, my name is Jerry Dobervani. I'm the Commissioner and Chief Administrative Officer at Metro Vancouver. Today I'd like to spend some time giving you an update on the North Shore Wastewater Treatment Plant, uh, provide a technical briefing of the work that's being done and will be done as we move forward. Whenever we do a presentation like this, I always like to step back a couple of steps and talk about Metro Vancouver as a whole. Um, we're a federation of 23 members, 21 cities, Treaty First Nation, and the Electoral Area A. And we're represented by a board of 41 directors that come from those municipal governments and, and local agencies. Uh, we, our strategic plan has three uh, main pillars. Deliver core services, uh, such as water, liquid waste, and solid waste services for the region. We plan for the future of the region, everything from planning for the future of those uh, core utilities, but also uh, coordinating regional land use so that all of the municipal official community plans fit together into a knitted uh, Metro 2050 approach for the region. Also long range planning for parks and air quality and climate. We also act as a regional forum it's an opportunity for our directors, for all the mayors of the region and all of our directors to come through and have robust discussion about issues that are key uh, for them in their municipalities, but also key for our citizens. And so those discussions are ones that can go on to senior levels of government, uh, the province or the feds, about issues that are important to our members. Today we'll talk about the wastewater treatment system. Um, our regional system uh, that serves uh, across the region, as you see here, is divided into four sewage areas. Unlike the water system, where it's all one system interconnected, our sewer system has four separate individual areas, uh, shown here in the colored uh, map. And then within that, those four areas, we have five sewage treatment plants. Uh, the Lionsgate plant and the Iona plant are two of the last primary sewage treatment plants on the west coast and they're uh, due for upgrading now. And it's the Lionsgate replacement, which is the North Shore treatment plant uh, that we'll be talking about today. So in terms of the program overview, uh, the Lionsgate plant, as I said, is one of the last uh, primary treatment plants on the West Coast. Uh, it's reached the end of its service life. It uh, doesn't meet our regulatory requirements. And Metro Vancouver leases the land uh, from the province and it will be returned to the Squamish Nation uh, following completion of the new plant. So we've got a number of drivers as to why the plant needs to be replaced. Um, one of the key is the impact on the environment. Um, it's a sensitive uh, marine ecosystem uh, and it's really important to our residents and to the Metro Vancouver Board uh, that the Burrard Inlet, the Salish Sea, are protected. And uh, also, uh, as I said earlier, it's a, an aging plant that's reached the end of its service life. And the uh, provincial and federal government have modern regulatory requirements, and the plant does not meet those. And so we need to upgrade it for those reasons. So when we talk about the North Shore Wastewater Treatment Plant project, it is part of an overall program and that program is what uh, we is included in the overall budget that we're discussing. So the overall North Shore Wastewater Treatment Plant program includes a pump station, new pump station that's been completed under the Lionsgate Bridge, conveyance pipe that connects the pump station to the treatment plant, the new treatment plant, and also the beginning of decommissioning work, the conceptual decommissioning work. So all of those projects that are in the overall program are what we are talking about when we talk about the overall program budget. It includes all those projects. The first two po components of it, the uh, North Shore uh, pump station, uh, was completed on time and on budget and has uh, won uh, major awards. Also the conveyance pipe that connects the two was completed on time and on budget. And so um, uh, the focus of the conversation now is on the one remaining part which is the treatment plant, uh, which is uh, the, the work that is yet to be done. Building for a growing population, the plant is designed to serve a population of over 300,000 residents um, out into the future. 
District of North Vancouver, the population of District of West Vancouver, the city of North Vancouver, and also the Squamish Nation and Tsleil-Waututh Nation. Uh, the plant will be expandable beyond that uh, so that we can serve growing populations out 100 years uh, through uh, modifications in the future. The site location uh, for the new plant is a previous BC rail lands. It was located about two kilometers east of the existing uh, sewage treatment plant, the Lionsgate sewage treatment plant. Um, it is located near uh, a densely populated neighborhood, as you can see here, in an industrial zone, but near uh, a neighborhood. And so we've worked really hard to make sure uh, that we can be compatible uh, with those adjacent land uses. We evaluated several options for the site of the plant, uh, both in the day and then more recently um, updating those reviews. And this uh, remains as the best location uh, for the plant on the North Shore. The treatment process itself, uh, I mean, the uh, existing plant is primary treatment only that removes uh, solids. Um, but this plant will also have secondary and tertiary treatment. The uh, board uh, approved tertiary treatment, uh, even though that's not required at this point from the, uh, um, the regulatory requirements. The treated effluent will be uh, uh, released um, and substantially improved from what's there today. Uh, today, the primary treatment removes about 90 or 60% of the uh, suspended solids. Secondary treatment will bring that up to about 93% of the uh, suspended solids. Tertiary treatment, uh, which will be achieved on site, will bring that up to a 99% reduction of total suspended solids. Another key issue is the microplastics and contaminants of emerging concerns. Um, the plant will remove up to 99% of the uh, microplastics through secondary and tertiary treatment. And, uh, and that's an important key as we move forward and as science is continuing to advance and we're learning more and more about the impacts of some of these materials. Resource recovery, uh, wastewater flow, we're collecting the heat and uh, distributing it to uh, um, district energy systems. Uh, the biogas cogeneration to produce the heat and also power for the plant, and the biosolids are collected. We currently use 100% of our biosolids uh, for beneficial use, whether that's generating, uh, creating uh, fertilizer, uh, whether it's uh, application uh, for reclamation of abandoned uh, mines or gravel quarries. Uh, so currently 100% of our biosolids are used beneficially and, uh, and we intend to continue that in the future. Okay, so now I'd like to go into uh, some more detail on the project history and the background. Uh, so the project has been around for um, many years. The planning and procurement goes back to 2013, 2017. A uh, contract was awarded to Axiona in 2017. Um, I'll focus um, at a key point in time, uh, which was the end of 2019 and 2020. Um, we had a new board in place at Metro Vancouver, um, a new uh, commissioner. Uh, That's when I started at the end of 2019. And, uh, and we created a new project delivery department uh, because we knew, the board knew, that we had um, a tremendous number of very large uh, capital projects underway. We have over 300 projects on the go at any one time, and, and we had a number of very large, complex uh, infrastructure projects that needed to be delivered and were key to our delivering our core services to the region uninterrupted. And so the creation of the project delivery department in 2020 um, led to uh, uh, strong project controls um, and looking at the delivery of that North Shore Wastewater Treatment Plant. Um, Axiona's termination occurred um, following that. So when I look in more detail at the project delivery timeline, you'll see through 2019 and 2020, we had a stop work order and a number of contractual issues with Axiona. The new project delivery group was managing the contract and the work with Axiona and the contractual issues continued. In 2021, Axiona laid off 130 staff and slowed down work on the site at a point when the project was not meeting its schedule or its budget. 
Also, Axiona told Metro Vancouver it needed more time and more money to complete the project, and that's why the board made the difficult decision to terminate the contract with Axiona in 2022. PCL was brought in as a construction manager to start doing initial work of correcting deficiencies. AECOM was our owner's engineer, and they transitioned to become the new design engineer, and we were able to start getting work done. Early works began at the end of 2022 and into 2023. So activities since that transition with both AECOM and PCL on site. We've done a due diligence review of the existing design and construction, which were Axiona's responsibility under its contract. This review led AECOM and PCL to conclude that approximately 1,500 concrete repairs were required, and PCL has worked hard in making these repairs. We formed an expert panel to help advise the board. We've also developed a detailed project execution plan, cost estimates, and a schedule for moving forward. By way of example, this is an area of concrete identified as needing repair. So one of the questions we get is, why didn't Metro know about these deficiencies earlier? While Metro had independent reviewers, the majority of the deficiencies did not come to light until after Metro Vancouver was able to review the design and construction in detail post-termination. So for example, these voids had a thin layer of concrete and were not visible until that concrete was chipped away once we were on site. We formed a task force uh, to review options. Uh, we brought board forward information in September of 2023. Uh, the board uh, required more information and had lots of questions. And so a task force was formed, and that task force met uh, many times over the following months uh, where the um, members were able to ask any question, and staff answered all the questions that were put before them over those months. And that brought up the level of understanding uh, to be much higher uh, so that the board was in a better position to make the difficult decisions they had to in terms of how to move ahead. So the updated estimate and cost schedule moving forward. Um, one of the things we clearly learned in the market is that, um, that the transfer of risk uh, from Metro Vancouver uh, to industry is not possible um, in this current um, climate. And so it's a much different environment uh, than when the project was originally launched. So developing an estimate for a project like this is, is very, very complex. The, uh, the design itself, the scale of the project is, is huge. The, I mean, there's um, hundreds of miles of cabling and piping. It's a very complex design. Um, you know, it's equivalent of, of building two stories of swimming pools, uh, one on top of the other in terms of the tanks. And uh, in addition to the complexity, one of the challenges we had post-termination was the number of concrete repairs required and the discovery that the design was not nearly as far along as we had previously understood. And for anybody coming in to take on the project, they were taking on a project that was partially designed and partially constructed, and that added a number of complexities. Uh, the industry itself had changed, that uh, the transfer of risk uh, to industry um, is much more difficult and, and for a large-scale project like this not possible anymore. So that's a change in contracting approach. Um, we talk about inflating costs and here's a number of different cost indicators and you can see over time how relatively consistent they've been uh, till the global pandemic hit and markets became unstable and you can see clearly uh, there's been a substantial fluctuation and change. And so the world is not the same as it was uh, pre-pandemic and, uh, and, uh, and will take a long time to stabilize at some new level, uh, but the new level will be higher than what the level was prior to that. In order to assist us in setting the budget, we had three um, separate cost estimates completed uh, for this very large project. Uh, first one was completed by the engineer of record who performed an independent estimate. Um, secondly, we brought in a third party construction estimators to do uh, an estimate of the work. 
And finally, our current contractor developed a, a detailed estimate of what uh, was required to complete the work. So we had three separate estimates to draw on as we set the program budget. The drivers, as we said, relate to deficiencies, uh, the required rework is required, um, over 1,500 uh, repairs to concrete deficiencies. The cost escalation that's taken place, substantial. The instability in the market, the cost installation, the escalation that's happened specifically since um, COVID. Labor availability, not only is labor availability and productivity a problem throughout the region, uh, but also in particular, um, we're seeing more and more difficulties in accessing the North Shore and, uh, and premiums being charged for labor access to the North Shore. And also just capacity issues. Uh, there are a number of very large scale infrastructure projects uh, that are underway um, concurrently and will be coming uh, into construction in the near future. And so there is a, a limitation to what the market can handle. Uh, I've talked about takeover implications, the complexity of taking over a project that's partially designed and partially uh, built. So the revised estimate for the North Shore Wastewater Treatment Plant Program is $3.86 billion. Uh, that's an increase of $2.8 billion. And, uh, and that's to build out the program out to 2030. Looking ahead, the goal that I'm confident that we will achieve is that at the end of the day, we will have a high quality asset that operates as intended to provide um, much improved wastewater treatment for the North Shore. And it will provide that high quality of service for many, many decades to come. I want to be clear with the public that we're confident that the project will be finished in a way that delivers high value for the North Shore for decades to come. So with that, I'd like to wrap up and thank you very much for your time to learn a little bit more about the North Shore Wastewater Treatment Plant Program. Uh, it's a very complex pro program. We know that the, the cost escalation is a major concern and, and that's something we're working through with the board uh, to develop a way um, to allocate the costs and to incorporate the costs into our long range financial plans in a way that can maintain a degree of affordability uh, for the residents of the region. We're keenly aware of the cost pressures uh, that regional residents face. And while we have a large number of major capital works that are needed in order to ensure continued delivery, uninterrupted delivery of our core services, we also know that there's a cost component that we need to manage effectively, and the board is giving the staff clear direction uh, to do that as we go forward. So thank you very much for taking the time to learn more about the project. Bye.